Hello and welcome to this session in which we will keep discussing layered security and cyber security and cyber defense. In the prior session, we looked at defensive in depth, which is a form of layered security. In this session, we're going to be looking at something called redundancy and diversification. The overall idea is the same here. We're going to be looking at more specific on what do we mean by redundancy and diversification. But the point is to use multiple security methods to safeguard the same asset. So we have one asset, and it's not only protecting this asset using one method, multiple method. And those methods should not be the same methods. We should have alternative defensive measures. So if one system fails, if it's the same system, they're going to both fail at the same time if it's the same type of defense. An alternative, another form of defense, therefore preventing a scenario where a single failure compromises security. What I want you to think about is an airplane. When an airplane, uh, an airplane, I could assure you, for every single control, they have a multiple defense. In other words, if something fails in an airplane, the airplane doesn't immediately fall off the sky. There's a, a redundancy in security, redundancy in controls. And this is, this is what we want to do. We don't want one single failure to bring down the system. And just think of an airplane. They'll have multiple defenses for each type of an issue. Why? Because you don't want one issue to bring down the plane. In this strategy of redundancy and diversification, make sure that the organization is not vulnerable to attack, exploiting a singular weakness. Because you don't want to have, what if they attack you and they pen penetrate your system from one area, that's it, that, that's, there's only one defense in that area. There should be, they penetrate this defense, they'll have another, another form of defense, a secondary and maybe a third and a fourth level of defense, depending how important is that asset. So introducing a vi variation, variation means it doesn't have to be the same one. It should not be the same one because if they were able to penetrate the first line, they can do the same thing penetrating the second line. Within these security measures, further strengthen, further strengthen, you want a variation. And this is what we will discuss in this session, those various layers of security defenses. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. The redundancy and diversification strategy can be implemented through various methods, those layers of security. You can have a layering process, isolating process, abstraction, concealment, data uh, concealment, and segmenting hardware. We're going to look at each one of those separately, explaining what it is, and giving an example, starting with the layering process. Layering is having more layers, more than one layer. Layering means adding multiple security measures at different stages. You have one stage and you are adding level to that stage within that system. So each layer is designed to catch a threat that might slip through the first, uh, through the previous ones, making it harder for attackers to breach. So if you penetrated this layer, the first layer, you have another layer. Then if you penetrate the second layer, you have a third layer. A good example will be an organization using firewalls. That would be maybe the first layer. Then an intrusion prevention system. Then an intrusion detection system and sequence. So if a malicious actor was able to go through the firewall, the prevention system will block, will block them from taking any action. And if they went through the firewall, and through the prevention system, the detection system, the IDS, will detect them early on and we can respond. Now I'm using three technology systems, three layering process. Now you could have people involved in this process where a person review the IDS on a regular basis to, through their eyes, to look at any unusual activities. Basically review those unusual activities in the IDS. Don't rely on the automated system. This way we could have people and technology involved in this layering process. So this is layering. Isolating process, as the word suggests, you're isolating 
processes. Process isolation involves separating a critical process from each other to ensure that if one is compromised, the other remain unaffected. So, think of segregation of duties. This minimizes the risk of a single point of failure and contain the impact of a breach. So what does that mean? Let's assume we have this process, which is the red process, and we have the orange process, we have the yellow, and we have the blue. But these processes are what? Are segregated, are segregated. So if one process failed, it doesn't affect the other processes. So you're segregating the process. Same concept in segregation of duties, but segregation of duties is a little bit different in a sense that uh, one individual is checking the work of the others. This is this is the purpose of segregation of duties. So if that if that person, let's assume you allow one person to go through the whole process from A to Z. If that person is unethical, that's it. Your whole system breaks down because the process is controlled by one individual. That's why you segregate the duties. So you don't let one individual in control of the whole process. Isolating process is the same concept where you take the processes and you break them down. So if one process fails, it doesn't affect the other. A good example in cybersecurity in a cloud computing environment, virtual machines are used to isolate customer environment from each other. So this way, if an attacker compromise one virtual machine, the isolation prevent the attack from spreading to others. Same, this picture also illustrate this virtual machine example. What you do is you are able to penetrate the red virtual machine. You don't have access to the orange, the yellow, and the blue, isolating the process. We have something called abstraction. Abstraction refers to what? Abstraction refers to the simplification of a simple, of a complex process or system. In this way, allowing the users or the administrator with the essential information necessary for interaction. So a system could be very complex. What you need to do, don't show the users the complexity of it. Hide the complexity so they can only click on this button or turn this light on. In this way, you don't show them what's going on behind the scene. By hiding the underlying complexity, abstraction reduces the risk of misconfiguration because if they have access to too much information or too much access to the system, they could mis misconfigure the system or most importantly, misuse it, change the setting, change the websites that we can use to. For example, you tell them you cannot access a certain website. That's it. You prevent them from doing so, but you don't show them how you prevent them, right? Because then they can change the configuration. This is a simple example that could lead to security vulnerability. And the reason I'm giving this example, because back when the internet was starting, so back in 99, 2000, well, when the internet beca became a common, a common place at work, I still remember we used to have only one computer system where at lunch, for example, you'll have five to 10 minutes to use the, the internet, you know, check uh, news, sports uh, events, whatever you want to do. And they limited the websites where you can what you can visit. But within that system, one individual, one person, he was a techie and he knew how to change the configuration. So they limited which website you can visit. So this individual went in there and changed the configuration of the network and everyone was able to access any site that they want to. Then obviously, the, the manager was able to kind of catch up on that. But the point is, you don't you don't give users, you give them abstraction in a sense, don't let them, act, don't give them access to changes in the system, misconfiguration. It also makes system easier to manage and secure by focusing on high level control. All you have to do is focus on these controls. An example will be a web application like a firewall, a web application firewall, abstract the complexity of a web application security. So users, configure rules at high level such as blocking SQL injection attacks without needing to understand the specifics of how, the, how these attacks are executed or how the blocking is technically implemented. So you just, they can block, but you don't, they don't have to know programming or go in there and perform complex tasks. You, you obscure the system, you make it simple to use. This abstraction allow administrators to effectively secure application with less specialized knowledge. Concealment. Concealment is a little bit different. What are you hiding here? You are concealing. Hiding information or resources to prevent unauthorized access or discovery. Now, you don't want them to have access to the information, not because of, of its complexity. You want to make it, keep it simple. You just, you don't want them to have access. 
This can be achieved through various means such as encryption or restricting access to information. Here you're just basically, you don't want them to see you're hiding the information from them. An example will be encrypting data stored in the cloud is a form of concealment. Even if a person was able to access the data with, you know, obviously unauthorized party was able to access the data, access the physical storage, the encrypted data will do what? would prevent the individual from taking advantage of that leak, from taking advantage of that access, because even if they have access to the data, the data is encrypted. Encrypted means you cannot read it. So this applies usually to sensitive information because you don't want anyone to see it. Even if they have access to it, you encrypt the data. The data would look like numbers and they don't. you, you cannot read it. Segmenting the hardware, that's also something that we talked about before, is as the word suggests, segmenting keeping the hardware separate from each other. So hardware segmentation involves dividing a network into smaller, manageable segments or zone, each with its own security control. If you look at this picture, we have the yellow, the red, and the blue. They're segmented from, from each other. This limits the spread of attack within the network and allows more tailored security policies for different segments. So if someone was able to penetrate the yellow hardware or network, they cannot penetrate the blue and the red because they are segmented from each other. And the yellow might be more, uh, more, we have more sensitive data. We may want to have more security for the yellow rather than the red and the blue. So for example, could be a corporate network uses a virtual local area network to separate the HR department from the R&D department. And each virtual LAN has its own access control and policies preventing an attacker who gains access to the to one virtual local area network from easily moving to the other. So let's assume they were able to penetrate our HR department, which is not good because they have access to our employees, employees' data. But what we can do with the employees' data, we could encrypt them so they can read it. So first, we separated the network. We have firewalls and we encrypted the data. But let's assume they were able to access this and that's it, bring our HR department down. Well, that's fine. If they do that, it's totally separate from our R&D, which it have even have more important information for us. Let's assume we're a pharmaceutical company. So this is what we mean by segmenting hardware. And by hardware, we mean it could be network, uh, it could be virtual hardware or a logical hardware. It doesn't really matter. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. Which of the following best describes the benefit of implementing a layered process in an organization cyber security strategy so what's the benefit of the layering process what's the layering process is it a to simplify the security management process uh, i don't believe the layering will simplify it it might make it more complex because of the nature of layering so it's definitely not to simplify so a is out ensure a single layer of security is sufficient that's the opposite of layering layering is making sure we have more than one layer therefore b is out that's easy elimination C, it provides multiple layers of security checks to catch a threat that might bypass others. I would say, yeah, that's one of the main pro one, one of the main benefits. So I would keep C, but let's look at D. To decrease the overall cost of security implementation, no, layering will increase the cost. If anything, what you're doing is you're taking one asset or one process and you're protecting this asset multiple times. And by, 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 by doing that, by expending resources and... It, if you need resources, it's going to cost you more. So the, be the best one that described the layering process, it provides multiple layers of security checks in case one attack bypass one layer. So the answer is C. A, B, and D don't serve this process. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs. That's going to help you whether you're studying for your CPA exam or accounting courses. Invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.